Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Scented Safari. My name is Triple Inc and I'll be your tour guide for today's journey. Today we'll be observing the behavior of a very special niche fragrance house, Zoologist. While many of these elusive scents remain shrouded in mystery, we have a rare opportunity to share and experience them together today. Join me and together we'll uncover the mysteries within Zoologist on Triple Inc's Scented Safari. What's up everybody, it's Bradley. Thank you for stopping back by the channel, Triple Inc. I know I'm a little bit late on the zoologist train, if you will. A lot of people have already done reviews on this, but actually, I've never smelled any of these before and I'm super excited. I know Timmy from Imagine Scent is a huge fan of this house and he actually sent me all these samples. I'm gonna sample their entire line today and let you guys know my first impressions. Now guys, it took me a long time to hunt down all these fragrances, but I have somehow managed to have them all in captivity right here so we can do a little bit of a closer examination on their scents. And if you guys don't already know, the House of Zoologists right here, they specialize in doing fragrances that are supposed to smell like the environment of the animal that is named after that it lives in. That is just an amazing concept. Seriously, what other niche house can you say has this type of concept where they make scents that are supposed to smell like like a, like a habitat, basically. I don't know, that's about as artistic as it's going to get, in my opinion. So I'm sure you guys are on the edge of your seats right now in anticipation, and I'm not going to leave you hanging any longer. In no particular order, let's get into it. So the first one up is Dragonfly. I'm going to spray this on a test paper right here and let you guys know what I think about this one. Wow. Wow. That literally opened up to me like bubbly, fresh 7-Up or Sprite or something like that. Wow, this is really nice. It has aldehydes, maybe that was the aldehyde and the lemon note up top. Rainwater in here, which I do kind of see as well. It's got a very nice freshness to it. Man, this is really nice, guys. It has a very bubbly, sharp fizziness almost. Seriously like a fresh, refreshing Sprite or 7-Up drink. Super refreshing, kind of smells like fresh fallen rainwater, maybe on like leaves or something like that. I could definitely see myself if I were an actual dragonfly living in an environment that smelled just like this. Very refreshing, very green, uplifting, bubbly, fresh, and very energetic. You know, dragonflies, they kind of zip to and fro, and this is exactly what this smells like to me. Very energetic scent. That was really nice, guys. A lot different from what I was expecting, and off to a really good start, I must say. Alright, guys, next up is Hummingbird. Let's see what Hummingbird smells like. Wow. Man, that's really nice. Super smooth right out of the gate. This has tons of fruity notes up top, like apple, citruses, pear, plum. It has honey, honeysuckle in the mid, and it's a nice creamy base. This to me smells like a very nice fruity uh, floral scent that is slightly creamy, but very delicate, very soft, and very, very feminine as well. On the ladies, this will smell beautiful. I must say, guys, I was a little nervous coming into this house. I didn't know what to expect. I was expecting super animalistic scents, but these first two are actually very wearable. Like, I had, we have no idea that they were from a house called Zoologist. <sighs> kind of seductive and alluring, um, just a really nice, soft, fruity, slightly floral scent. It's beautiful, sexy too. <sighs> Hummingbird gets a big, big thumbs up from me so far. This is really nice, guys. I'm off to a great start right here. Two great scents. Oh no guys, oh no. I'm uh, pretty scared for this one. This one is called Civet. If you guys don't know what Civet is, go look it up. It is basically, uh, some people will call it the urine or the glands, the scent glands of the Civet uh, animal. It's used in some other fragrances and it just smells very, very fecal sometimes and very just pungent. And take a look at this juice color right here guys. I don't know if you can see that. That juice color is extremely dark amber. I am pretty nervous about this one right here. All right, got myself together. Wish me luck. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, wow. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> oh god. Okay, it's getting a little bit better. That initial blast was was something else. Very very musky. I say that right now. This is an extremely musky animalistic scent. Kind of sweet. Um, kind of a stinky vibe underneath almost, but. It smells like, like a powerhouse, like 80s or 90s scent, you know? I'm not even gonna try and list all the notes. I mean, there's a ridiculous amount in here, but the base notes is what I'm ma mainly concerned about with this one. We got coffee, incense, lavender, musk, civet, uh, Russian leather, vanilla, vetiver woods, and, and that's exactly how this scent smells. This smells bonkers. This smells like just bouncing off the walls crazy with this heavy, musky, animalistic scent with some sort of uh, florals and I don't even know, man. Definitely an experience, though. I gotta give them credit for making something like this. Um, it is nice and smooth, and I can detect the quality in all three of these so far, no doubt. Woo! I'm not sure about this one, guys. If you like your 80s, 90s powerhouses that are very musky and masculine, check this one out. Okay, next up, I'm gonna butcher the name of this. I don't know how to pronounce it. I probably should have looked it up. Um, Maki? Maku? I think I'm messing that up. It's got the monkey on the front, so I'm expecting something maybe sort of like a rainforest. Let's see what we get with this one. 
Alright, here we go. Ooh, wow. It's very interesting. This is kind of dry and fruity. Wow, <laughs> that's really cool. It's actually was bringing me back to when I would go to the zoo as a kid. Kind of like the monkeys, if it, to be honest. Not in a bad way. Not like, you know, all of them throwing poop everywhere. <laughs> kind of fruity. It has apple and um, cedar up top. I definitely get the cedar. Uh, frankincense tea. You lang lang in there. I'm not really sure. It's a dry, woodsy scent. Um, kind of slightly green and almost earthy, like a little bit of dirt in there as well, maybe. It's not a strong like, it's not a strong dislike either. It's just kind of in the middle. I just found it very interesting of how it does smell kind of like a monkey's exhibit. Next up, we have Nightingale. I'm guessing this is going to be one of their more feminine offerings, so let's see what we get from this one. This one is definitely fruity, but I get darker fruits. This almost seems like more of a nighttime version to what Hummingbird was. It has a saffron in the opening. Looks like it has Japanese plum in there again, which I definitely get. Red rose blossom. It just has patchouli in the base as well. I get a uh, dark fruity scent from this one. It's very nice. This one isn't like wowing me as much as some of the other ones, but I definitely do think it's nice. Um, I think if you're maybe a lady and you're looking for a nice going out scent that's kind of fruity and fun, this one could be a good one to look at. All right, next up is. No. That's right, guys. This is Panda from Zoologist. This is the reformulated 2017 version. Let's see what we get from this. I'm expecting bamboo. Wow, 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 that's awesome. I know this is one of Timmy's favorites, and dude, this is epic. Wow, it's like fruity, green bamboo, but it's velvety, silky smooth. This has apple in the opening, osmanthus, magnolia, a little bit of tea in there, mid notes, we got earthy notes, orris, patchouli, civet actually in the dry down and vanilla, but it's all about this fruity bamboo, like green forest. It has just a touch of sweetness, this like sweetness from the apple maybe. Very fragrant, very almost delicious mouth-watering. Completely different from what I was expecting. It's really good. Like this is probably my favorite so far. Next up is beaver. I'm expecting kind of a woodsy scent. You know beavers like to chop up wood and stuff like that. So let's see if we indeed get that. All right, beaver. Oh, wow. <laughs> <clears throat> Mm. Yeah, no, it smells like wet dog, straight up, like, oh god, it's bringing back like memories of me um, back in high school, we would use formaldehyde to help dissect animals when we were doing that. There's a little bit, a little bit of that in here, to be honest. Oh man, it smells like wet fur, really. That's what they were going for with this one, I, could, I guess they accomplished that, it does smell like a beaver straight got out of the water. Man, that's so weird, that's very animalistic, very musky, um, uh, not for me at all, dude, not for me. This is daring to the max, I think, just wet dog, wet beaver, nah. Alright guys, our scented safari is unfortunately coming to a close, we only have two organisms left to observe, and this next one is rhinoceros. Let's go rhino. Oh wow, oh man. Again, off the top, like, <laughs> in your face, um, unabashed, I mean, this has rum in the opening, bergamot, a little bit of elemi, tobacco, um, immortelle, sandalwood, smoke, and I really get that. Uh, it comes off to me, like, very harsh, and kind of this sharp, almost like paint thinner, if you ask me. Not a fan of this one at all, and it seems like some of these, these recent ones have just not been doing it for me. Alright guys, we are at the last scent. And this one I truly am scared of, truly. This one is called Bat. Now you've probably heard a lot about Bat, I've watched some reviews on it, and it just has made me even more scared to try this one because take a look at this juice color, maybe some of the darkest brown amber juice that you will ever see. And come on, what, how, how can they make a bat smell good? This, I've heard this smells like a bat cave. Um, looking at the notes here, damp earth, I'm scared. You know what, it's the last one, so let's just go ahead and get this one over with. And you know what, I was going to try and do my best Batman voice. Unfortunately, I suck at it. Then I realized they created... Filters. Here we go. Oh, sh Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. That is, um, oh. Oh, I can't do it, guys. I can't do that one. Not at all. It just smells straight up like a wet cave with moldy banana and, like, Sharpie undertone. 
Uh, that will wrap up this scented safari. Thank you for coming with me on this journey and experiencing all these fragrances with me. I hope that my thoughts were informative to you and maybe go check out this line of zoologists. Really, really a couple impressed me. Panda being one, Dragonfly was another one. I seem to like their fresher offerings, some of them not so much, a very polarizing house, but I gotta give them props for going out of their way and being super unique and creating these types of scents. Also, the pricing for this line is phenomenal. You know, as far as niche pricing goes and how unique these are, possibly one of the best uniqueness to price ratios in the niche game that there is right now. That is awesome, but guys, be sure to let me know in the comments below what you think about the line of zoologist fragrances. Really interested to see your thoughts and which one is your favorite from the bunch and which one is your least favorite. Guys, that will conclude my safari. I'm going to uh, have to kin continue searching for my next niche fragrance line that I'm going to review. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to smash that like button down there, leave a comment in the comment section, share this video with your friends, and of course, subscribe to my channel for more videos. Guys, until next time, stay smelling great. I'm off on another scent safari.